Alright, what's up guys? Single player Nacho here. Back with a more spooky countdown this time. 10 paranormal BOWs in the Resident Evil series. Now, ghosts and zombies do not mix. If they do, it's a disgusting, gooey mess. LOL. My point is, Resident Evil is the complete opposite of a ghost tale. It's about meat and bone, not floating chairs and shit. But there are outliers here and there. These BOWs are inspired by some ghost tale. They act like ghosts, or they just kind of look like one. Alexia Ashford Thematically, everything about the Ashford family will give you the chills. They are the definition of a ghost family, with Alexia Ashford being the biggest offender. Look at this woman. She's pale white, dressed up like a long deceased spirit from the 1800s, living in this humongous estate that's filled with dead bodies dead bodies that she's partly responsible for, by the way. I only need to show you one screenshot of Alexia's private residence, and I think you'll agree that there are definitely ghosts fucking in there. Look at this damn place. And that's just the outside. The inside contains a giant baby doll that's at least two stories tall, and it looks like it's decaying somehow. What the hell, man? Alexia's bedroom doesn't make things any bit better. If you don't believe in ghosts, you should now. The halls nearby contain more dolls, candles, just about everything you need to confirm that you've probably shat yourself. Don't worry, I don't think ghosts have a sense of smell. The Executioner Multiple heads with faces that invoke endless suffering, manifested from an organism known as the Black God, and you have yourself a very paranormal creature known as the Executioner. It also has a belly piercing. I have no comments, I'm just here to provide the information. The Shadows of Rose DLC is pretty different compared to its parent game, RE Village, but it's this strange case of same game, different beast. The overarching enemy in Village and its DLC is the Black God, and we're dealing with its physical creatures in the main game. In Shadows of Rose, we're battling its mental demons. The Executioner just so happens to be a stalking, mass of bad thoughts and it wants to execute your soul. Definitely one of the mind monsters that sticks out the most. Disappearing Mansion Zombie Now this is more of a ghostly activity than a BOW, but I think it deserves a spot anyway. In Resident Evil 1 Remake, there is an odd occurrence that has baffled me for quite a bit. In the mansion's first floor, you'll come across a crow room, where a corpse lies in a destroyed fashion. Whoever this guy was, he was clearly murdered leave the room. Once you return, the corpse is no longer there. Instead, an army of crows have now appeared in its place, suggesting that these birds went to town on this corpse, buffet style. But the thing is, this has never been confirmed. You'd also think that they'd leave some leftovers, you know, maybe a bone or two. Why not? The Spencer Mansion itself, in appearance, is a breeding ground of haunted ghost tales, and maybe this moment was placed in the game to spook you in that fashion. If you find this missing man, please call the hotline below. You'll be rewarded with a picture of Sassy Verdugo. The Fetus Surprise, surprise. The Fetus should 100% be on this list, and that's one of the weirdest sentences I've ever said. This slimy little accident is actually the perfect specimen for a ghost tale, except it's a great mix of biological ghost tale. This thing looks like a very much alive monster, but the design itself on paper, huge head, huge mouth, black eyes, this is the closest to a real ghost that we'd probably ever get. Like if ghosts were an actual thing. And if that doesn't scare you, I don't know what will. We're not even touching the surface about this thing's backstory. This is the abomination of Ethan and Mia's worries about creating a monster. So we're looking at all this evil energy put into one place, one being. Even the lead up to finding the fetus is like the beginning of a ghost film. Novistadores. And back to reality, with a Resident Evil monster that does exist. These nasty little bugs have essentially taken over the Salazar castle, springing out cocoons and of course the mega Novistador uh, sack. I wonder if all these renovations were pre-approved by Salazar. Either way, 
there is one specific attribute of Los Novistadores that make them very phantom-like. Their ability to disappear through blending into the environment. The watery basement in which they are first found in is also a prison, for some reason, and it's a perfect breeding ground for ghosts. Something pretty messed up happened here. I also want to share a little nugget of my own ghost encounter with Los Novistadores. Back in 2004, I sucked at video games. In fact, I still do. So I bought this Resident Evil 4 guidebook to help me out just a little bit. In it, according to the book, there is a special white phantom novistador found before even encountering the first one that runs away. Of course, I was never able to find it and shrugged it off as a misprint. So next time you load into this area, just know you are being watched. Probably. Mia Winters. I don't want to be mean, but the truth is Mia Winters just looks like a fucking ghoul. End of video. I'm just kidding. But man, she really does. We need to go back to the very first look at Resident Evil 7, back when the VHS tapes were being treated as trailers. We had a very vague look at a genuinely terrifying looking woman who turned out to be Mia. Just look at this frame. Tremendously haunting. I believe the fanbase's reception of Mia has been pretty mixed. They don't really like her. I'll step out in her defense. Having Mia as the very first enemy we face in RE7 was a genius move. There's a very grindhouse feel to her introduction, waving around a chainsaw like a lunatic, wearing a wife beater and some jeans. Sets up the grimy new Resident Evil theme for the entire game. The question has to be asked though, was Mia actually innocent in any of her actions? Absolutely not. She seemed very knowledgeable about Evelyn's developments and only survived because Evie saw her as a mommy figure. Do you guys like Mia? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. The D and E series. This is a family of fetuses you'll never want to meet. I mean, anyone that goes by the last name series is an automatic get the hell out. As you all know, this is Evelyn, otherwise known as the E series as well as her D-series sisters, Dahlia, Dana, Darlene, Dorothy, Dolores, Diana, Daniela, and finally, Doris. It's a pretty big family. Unfortunately, these sisters hardly ever had any actual family time, as they were experimented on pretty early on in their lives. Fortunately, as an act of mercy, in a way, the D-series sisters died by way of murder-suicide in a freak accident that rendered their little minds unable to continue the insane experiments. Only one of the sisters survived, Evelyn. Spooky ass backstory with the malevolent spirits of little girls, check. Spooky ass corpses of the sisters still being used in experiments, check. I mean, this entry has absolutely everything to be a ghost story. Even when you're facing Evelyn, everything about her interactions scream paranormal activity. Her powers revolve around creepy ass hallucinations. Evelyn herself is designed to look like a little ghost girl from the 1800s. Resident Evil 7 rewound the RE series VHS tape, and the theme was definitely centered around a paranormal haunted house with villains that gained supernatural powers. The mannequins. Wait, that thing didn't just move, did it? In Resident Evil, things will come at you with teeth and claws, but here we have freaking mannequins, of all things. What's creepy about the mannequins? Virtually everything. These things are actually modeled after another monster on this list, Mia, and they're more formally known as Mia dolls. These things were specifically designed to, uh, how do I say this? Scare the fuck out of Ethan Winters. So why not model them after his wife? I mean, geez, is marriage that scary? I don't know. <laughs> the Mia dolls do just about everything you'd expect a haunted apparition to do. They move around behind your back, they have these motions that look like the scariest claymation film, and lastly, they will take you to another dimension of total darkness. I always wondered what would happen if a ghost thing would catch you. I think this death scene is pretty close to that. Hookman. Who the hell is Hookman? It's a valid question. This is a B.O.W. that would have changed the Resident Evil landscape forever. You're looking at a very early footage of RE4, before the real RE4. In this scrapped version, Resident Evil would have taken a vastly different approach, ditching the biological creatures and viruses for apparitions and phantoms. 
This area is quite literally haunted by ghostly figures. Instead of a new virus, we would have been introduced to an entity known as the fog. Once you see a smoke-like substance in a room, you know some shit is about to go down. Enter the Hookman. This dude would actually jump scare you out of the paintings on the wall, stabbing away with his chain hooks. The Hookman is such a paranormal B.O.W. He would have been primarily based through hallucinations rather than an actual living, breathing monster with gigantic tentacles and 10,000 eyes, which is so Resident Evil. Ultimately, this version was smushed out of existence, but I'm curious, would you guys have liked to have seen this version of RE4? Pretend the amazing one that we did get didn't exist. Do you think the Hookman would have been a good villain? Let me know. Donna Beneviento. Everything about Donna screams phantom woman from the 1800s. Everything, her house, her fit, her voice, and more than anything, her powers. She looks like DLC from that Sleepy Hollow movie starring Jonathan Depp. The only thing that's even more Sleepy Hollow than Donna is Donna's bestie, Angie. This is a duo from hell itself, and they probably smell like ectoplasm and an old ass house. <laughs> Donna and Angie are masters of creating hallucinations that cause their victims heavy injury or death. I don't think any YouTube ghost hunters would want a tour of their home. As soon as you get there, she asks for a picture, a memory of something you hold dearest. As you enter, she'll use that very memory and turn it into a putrid, horrifying nightmare in order to spook you out, I guess. You see, there's a reason why Donna is like this. She was bullied heavily for her facial deformities. She had a giant scar on her face. Her parents offed themselves, leaving her completely alone, which led her to being so isolated, she solely communicated through and with puppets. If Donna wasn't considered royalty, she'd be burned at the stake. She has all the traits of a witch-like entity, and I'd argue without a single doubt that Donna is the closest ghost character in the entire series. Thank you so much for checking out this video, I really appreciate it. Which of these ghost monsters B.O.W.s would you least like to be haunted by? And remember, you have to choose one, you're being haunted, so choose one. And I don't know, I mean, they're all pretty bad, I think. Survival rate is pretty damn low if you uh, see any of these uh, right in your face. So let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to check out the Discord, discuss your stuff there, share your artwork, share your memes, and follow me on Twitch. I will be streaming there a lot more, some Resident Evil stuff, horror stuff. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more horror lore, lists, and mysteries. Have an awesome rest of your day, and as always, stay single.